Welcome to the STARS program, seniors taking active roles in society. And now, here's your host, Anita Finley. We've talked to Dean Webb from Faith Farm Ministries a lot. I love the whole organization. Um, he is a marvelous man. But there's a woman that I've known. I've known her, actually, longer than I've known Dean Webb. Because yes. that's right. I just thought about that. I met her many, many years ago. And she's always been such an inspiration. And she just always pops up there somehow. When you need this, go talk to Judy. She's a pop-up. And so, <laughs> Judy, let's just maybe get a little history of how you wound up there. And then before we get finished, I want to talk about the women's program, which most of the time we don't talk about. So tell us about how did Judy Walters get to Faith Farm? That is a long story. I'm going to make it short. Um, I was actually a real estate broker. Uh, and I had cancer. I came down, I was diagnosed with stage four cancer 10 years ago. And so my business, because I was my own, I had my own brokerage. My business really took a hit because I had uh, surgery and then eight months of chemo and I couldn't keep the business alive. So when the chemo was over and restarting my business was very difficult, especially in 2005 during the real estate crash. Um, at that time, I was looking for something else. And somebody had mentioned to me, a dear friend of mine, Annie, had mentioned to me that there was uh, a job opening at Faith Farm, which I lived right around the corner. And I thought that would be a perfect opportunity. And in reality, I thought I was going to get help from my husband. I knew what Faith Farm did. I knew that they were a drug and alcohol addiction recovery. And my husband... And I have been married now for 32 years. We were married 25 years at the time. And it was a problem. So I thought I was going to get help from my husband. And when I applied, I was persistent. And finally, I landed the job. And what I found is that I got help for myself. <laughs> now, wait a minute. And what kind of a job? What, what were you offered to do? I was actually Dean Webb's assistant when I first started. Uh, I had a dual title. I was his executive assistant and development coordinator, which meant that uh, it was a new development department that they were starting up, and I was going to do the event planning. Homecoming was going to be my big baby. And um, so anyway, I, what, I, what I found out, which I didn't even, I've never heard the word at that time called codependency, and, but I found out that I have a Ph.D. equivalent in codependency. And what is that? That is um, when loved ones or people that are close to an addict feel like they need to fix them all the time. They take responsibility for the addict's actions. They blame themselves for their actions because they're constantly blamed by the addict, who is a great manipulator. Um and therefore, they take on addictive personality themselves because they become addicted to the person that they're trying to fix. And that can be as debilitating and as harmful as an addiction. So what I learned was that I had to be in recovery myself. You know, addiction, if you don't know, addiction is a family disease. Every family that has an addict also has an enabler. An addict cannot be an addict without an enabler. The enabler prevents consequences um, for the addict. They make excuses and they get in the way and they make things okay all the time. So the addict, in a sense, doesn't have to face the consequences of their actions. Um, so every family has an addict that has an addict also has an enabler, and that's what I was. Uh, they also have, if they have children or, or family members, they also have a scapegoat, somebody that takes all the blame. They have uh, a high achiever, somebody who excels as to compensate for the family issues. They have somebody who's a peacemaker, trying to constantly make the peace and keep people from fighting and all that. And then they have the clown. 
That's the DNA that makes up a, an addict family. Wow. And when I learned that, I did not learn that at Faith Farm, but I learned that through another recovery program. Uh, when I learned that there was an actual DNA of an addict family and that I could put my family members into those characters perfectly, if I was to rename them, that would, couldn't have been any more accurate. I realized that I wasn't alone, that there was there was a lot of us out there. You know, they say one in three has some addiction issue, whether it be them or a loved one, somebody in their family or close to them has an addiction issue. And we're not just talking about alcohol, folks. We're no. talking about now drugs. That's become the, the big thing. Drugs, yes. Pharmaceuticals, legal drugs. Yes. Become yes. street drugs. Yes. And the street drugs are very dangerous. They're usually laced with something else. And you buy street drugs and it could kill you very easily. So it really is a life or death issue. So you're now working. I as now say, work. You're now working in this organization, but you're also receiving recovery. It's a natural thing. Help, you know, we, when you, when you start to give back what you know and you share your story, you automatically help other people that are traveling in the same footsteps that you were in. That's what we do. I, I addicts are going to be, uh, God's soldiers. You know, they're going to be the ones that, that, um, help other addicts that well, who best to do it, but if, but those that have been through it. Um, it's a it's a major issue in our society, and uh, the one thing that is great about places like Faith Farm is that they get the help they need. Instead of incarcerating them, we need to rehabilitate. We need to regenerate and help them because uh, it's really not their fault. That first chance, that first choice is their choice, but after that, some people just become addicted. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a, I always call it a disease. It's it because, is a disease. Yeah, it's, it's not, a brain yeah, disease. Exactly. And once they start, it's very difficult. They say that willpower is actually being willing to give God the power. Mm-hmm. So God helps you through it because you can't do it yourself. But but let's um let's how how did your husband react when you hear now you get a job, mm-hmm. and now all of a sudden you're trying to get him involved in something how is that i'm not getting him involved that's the issue i have boundaries and the fact is that the more i got involved the more he went the other direction really yes and shortly after i started working at faith farm we separated and we just recently got back together so it's we were separated for about seven years wow judy and um we are now back together trying to, you know, it's just, it's a lot of patience. It's a lot of boundaries. It's a lot of healthy lifestyle living so that I can protect myself. But, you know, the fact is his recovery is his if he chooses to do it. And my recovery is mine. And I choose to do it. Um, this is great. You know, we never talked about this subject never talked before. About this. And I'm very happy because there are people listening who I'm saying, yeah, that's just what's happening to me. That's it. There's a lot of us out there, and the families really do need recovery also. That's why we started Celebrate Recovery. You'll recall we talked about Celebrate oh, Recovery yes, before. Yes. Well, it's back at Faith Farm now in Boynton Beach. Oh, fantastic. We opened it back up in June, and it's a way for the families of our students to come and get, get recovery as well. It's also for community members. Um, you know, we're open to anybody. Everybody has hurts, habits, hang-ups, and... Usually the addiction issue is a side side effect or a symptom of other underlying issues, whether it's, uh, you know, being abused as a child, whether it's um, anger issues, rejection issues, abandonment issues. There's so many different things that people struggle with. I have one gal on our Celebrate Recovery team that struggles with um, grief. She was, she's a mom of a child that when she was, this is 20 years ago now, but her child of eight years old was abducted and murdered. Oh my. Um, She now leads a grief share. This is the way, this is the way it works. You know, we go through recovery for whatever we are recovering from, but then once we get it, we can help others get through it. And that's, that's my life mission. So, ooh, that's, that's great. We were talking about when, 
when um, Judy first arrived. This is Judy, Phil, uh, Judy Walters, I'm sorry, Judy Walters, who uh, is the go-to person there at Faith Farm My Ministries. My actual title is Project Manager. So project anything, any Manager. Right, give it, give it, give it to, to Judy. Do. It's like, give it to, it. yeah, what is it used to be? Give it to uh, Ben, what was it? That little boy we'd say, give, give it, it to, to Mikey. Yeah, give it to Mikey, <laughs> <The> right? <cereal. laughs> give it to Mikey. Now we're going to give it to Judy. So, Judy, so um, when I, we talked about this, that we always think in terms of the male road role mm-hmm. in, you know, in... Um, alcohol and drugs but we don't think about the women and and what what makes the difference in the men and the women the dynamic is very different although they have a lot of the same issues the women have i i consider two major differences and one is children um usually the men can get away for a little while and their children are fine with uh, mothers that take care of them or grandparents and they've got a community of people and the father can get away to get right but a mom is hard to replace so when they have children it's really hard for them to take nine months out of their life which is what faith farm requires and really give it their all to recover but in reality it's a very short time because usually they're young and and it's a very short time in comparison to the rest of the child's life and usually when the children are young then the mom can get right and get back to her children before those crucial years or those preteens and this real um dangerous years for um, a child uh specifically a girl they're between womanhood and and childhood and it's very difficult the other issue is the hormones there is just no question that putting a bunch of women together, living together, is a difficult challenge. More so than men, because of more that. so than men. The testosterone is not doesn't affect well, you. They've the got same. their ego issues, but you can tell them there's no fighting, and they will listen. And if they don't, they're gone. But hormone issues for women on the you know time of month, whatever, it's just really a challenge. It's difficult to say the least. Um, but one thing you may not know is that when a bunch of women live together like that they get on the same cycle no i don't know yeah. that <laughs> no you're kidding yeah <laughs> so you can imagine total chaos with everybody going through it at the same time wow Just saying but i'll bet you also <laughs> have gotten sisterhood yes yes they bond and uh the when they when they graduate and they leave they stay connected they are best of friends Hey, you think about it. They've spent nine months of their lives totally burying their souls and sharing their deepest, darkest secrets and family secrets and hurts and shame. And um, so, yeah, they they bond and they get become very good friends. Nobody knows them like each other. And uh, it's uh, it's a really neat thing to see. It's the same thing when you take a step study, you know, you, you have the same group of women or men that go together through a step study. It takes about 12 step, 12, about nine to 12 months to do a 12 step study. And, uh, when you spend that much time together and really digging into issues, you're going to bond. You're going to become very good friends. Well, let's total enemies, one or the other. Well, let's talk about the women who are listening now. And, um, and some of them who've hidden the fact that they are, they have addictive tendencies and that it's ruining their lives. Mm-hmm. And, um, it, will you take any woman? How, let, let's just ask, how should, what should a woman do? Call and someone's going to interview them. Do you have space? We, at the very moment, we have some space. Yes. Um, it comes, you know, they, they come and go because of the, the motherhood issue and other things. Uh, the majority of them do stay the nine months. Right now, we do have some beds available. I would say the best place to start would be our online at our website, www.faithfarm.org. And there's an application on there that you can fill out. Do that first and submit it and then call intake. And what they'll do is an over-the-phone interview just to see if you qualify. And by qualify, I mean that we are a work training program. So you have to be able to work, 
okay, either in the phone room or in the store. It's a work training program. The, the um, You will be taught in a vocation that is resume worthy that helps you to get a job when you leave. And that's a, a big part of our program. Um, the other thing that would be, I would say would prevent, in most cases, would prevent you from being accepted would be a dual diagnosis. Meaning if you've been diagnosed with uh, bipolar disease or depression, severe depression, things like that, and you're on medicine for that, then we can't take you because we're not a medical facility. We are a regeneration program. We're a faith-based recovery program that uh, focuses a lot on spiritual growth and work training to give you tools so that when you leave, you can get your feet on the ground and and, and become, you have to be clean to be able to get in there, isn't that? Now, that's how true do you too. do that? I mean, you can go to various detox facilities if you're not detoxed yet. Uh, we need you to detox before you come to us. That means that you don't have to have that drink or that drug. What does the detox really detox mean? Detox is a, it can be a very serious issue. It's a medical issue. Uh, people that are coming off pills sometimes can do it themselves. To be honest, um, if they're coming off uh, major drugs like heroin, that could be a little bit more difficult, but they can still be done. Suggest suggesting go to a medical facility. Alcohol, you definitely go to a medical facility because el- alcohol uh, withdrawal can be very medically dangerous because you can seize, go into seizures. So we always say don't detox yourself from alcohol especially if you're a heavy drinker. Um, But you have to detox before you can come to us. Because like I said, we're not a medical facility. We don't have doctors and we don't prescribe medicine. So they come and uh, let's say they are accepted. Now it's like um, it's a job and a home at the same time, isn't it? It is. It's very comfortable. Um, they, They live together in about three different little homes on the property it's on the same campus as the men's program in boynton beach but separated Uh, they they live in a home-like environment with roommates of course but it has a kitchen and they can cook and we have a dining hall too and they usually eat their meals in the dining hall but they can cook Um, they have classes together they have church together they go to church twice a week they have a little bit of a worship or devotional period in the morning uh, some quiet time then they go to class they have an hour's worth of classes every day in the morning and they learn things from um, let's see some of our curriculum we have an alpha curriculum which teaches you who you are in your faith um, the power to love Things on chemical dependency, things on uh, God's regeneration. The Bible tells us a lot that we need to renew our thinking. We need to renew our minds. So we too teach a lot of spiritual uh, programming. Um, they also learn, uh, let's see, boundaries and lies women believe. Which lies is, women lies believe. Lies women believe. A lot of women come to us that have been abused or have been sexually abused as a child or um, they've had an abortion that they just can't forgive themselves for. Um, Or they just have been in a controlling relationship and they have no self-esteem, no self-worth. Many of them have been on the streets. Many of them have sold themselves for drugs. Yeah, I Dean Webb has brought some of these people here, some of the women. shame. That goes with that, that they can heal from. There is hope. They don't have to live that lifestyle. Uh, The Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office, I think, or Palm Beach County Police Department actually has a prostitution aversion program that Faith Farm has been part of in the past. And uh, we will take those women rather than incarcerate them, especially if they have a drug issue. That's uh, uh, so beautiful. So 
So can you think of someone right now, and you don't have to say who the person is. Of course, they, they wouldn't mind, but because everybody's so open. Someone who came that was absolutely having a terrible time, and today they are just so brilliant and so happy. Oh, so many faces oh. come to my mind. <laughs> okay. So many faces. Uh, if, you know, that I would... I would suggest there's stories in our U-turn book. Oh, absolutely. You can you turn to God. You can get that U-turn yeah. to God book and read story after story right. of graduation testimonies of lives changed. And and we've had uh we've had one gal that uh gave drugs to a boyfriend, he ended up dying in her bed. Um I mean tragedy. Yeah. Tragedy beyond what yeah. you can possibly conceive on your own yeah. these stories just are but they're real yeah. these are real stories women that have been selling themselves out on the street you know that they've they've done things and uh that they just can't believe that they've done and to see these women after they've been a few months in the program or even even 60 days 30 days in the program you would never picture that they would have come from a lifestyle like that there's just a a safe non-judgmental peace that they get from being at Faith Farm. And I'm sure you talk to a lot of them. You you have the most wonderful, beautiful spirit. And and I'm sure you know so many of them are scared and embarrassed and ashamed and, and whatever. And then once you put your arms around them and you, you hug them and you guide them, that you, the power that you have in your one spirit. Oh, that, that's, that's true, very though. sweet. But you I'll do. tell you what. You can't out give God as much as I try and and try to serve him and help these women. I am blessed beyond what you can imagine, especially the brand new ones that come into me. You know, I teach I teach the 12 steps mm-hmm. in the program and uh, you get those great those brand new. Yeah. They've never had any spiritual upbringing. They've they're just totally, totally broken. And showing them a little bit of God's love and having them respond to that is just mind boggling. It's, it's blessed. You've heard the term blessed to be a blessing. Yes. Yes. That's it. I can't, I can't even begin to tell you how much it's changed my life to be in a position to be able to be used like that. And you have been used and used. I'm sorry. You've been, um, you actually have had so many things happen to you too, which is, Somehow, you know, you you just keep moving like that little ready that that um, ever ready bunny. <laughs> you just never stop, and you you and I think so much of this does come from your being able to share who you are and what you love. There's healing, just, yeah. Because think about this: what if you had never discovered Faith Farm? It would have been a harder life for you, wouldn't it? It would have? definitely have been a harder life for me. There's something that comes, you know they. They, the Bible talks about our testimonies and how powerful they are and how strong he can be in our weakness. So it's in our weak moments, like through our testimonies, our stories, and our weak moments in our history. You know, I've got a lot of issues from my past that I never shared before, uh, before Celebrate Recovery or Faith Farm. I, you know, I'm not even in the program and the program saved my life. <laughs> Okay, Amazing. but from from the sexual childhood abuse to, you know, abusive relationships to um, abortions to a lot of different issues. And then the cancer. And then I just had the cancer again here in January, December, January. Uh, and I'm cancer free. I, I know you are. And it took 120 days for God to answer my prayer on that. That's something. Yes. So now I'm in remission again. And um you know, so there's a lot of hurdles, but you know, when you can, uh, be made strong right. in your weakness, then why would you not want to show yeah. other people how to get that? Same You're so thing? surrounded. You, you surround and you are surrounded by. I'm surrounded all by, this, aren't I, you? And, and being at Faith Farm is like a second family. You know, that's my family. I could go in there at any time when, when I was sick and, and any time I felt like I needed prayer, I could go to any one of my coworkers there in the, the corporate office or on the campus and say, I need prayer. And they would just immediately come and pray for me. Uh, they prayed for me in church. They, they anointed me in church. They prayed for me in the offices. They prayed. 
They got me on prayer circles throughout the country, you know, and that's how God responds to that 120 days. Is that amazing? It is. Yeah. Yeah. Why would I not be be so excited about that? No, I understand that. And and for we've been talking so much about the women. But for those of you who are women who've uh, who do have men in your lives, Mm. kids or men, um, whoever they are. You need to really go to faithfarm.org and see what's on there that might give you some inspiration. Dean Webb, of course, has a lot of his inspirational radio shows, but you will see so many people. I mean, I've been so involved in so many peripheral ways and, um, I don't, I've always told you, I don't know of another organization that you can see the transformation. I mean, you see it if you give money, if you do anything for Mm -hmm. them. It's there. You don't have to think it's right. It's behind those doors and who's getting this or that. It's all there. And it's such a beautiful thing. I wanted to say one more thing to the women in your audience that that have, say they have a spouse that needs help or a, a, a man that has a woman spouse that needs help. I would suggest that you not wait until they get help to get help for yourself. Okay. Don't wait for them to get it. I picked up a book one time. It's called Power of a Praying Wife, thinking I was going to get help from my husband. And the very first page in that book was saying that I needed to get help for myself, that I was the one that was the problem. Well, that book hit the wall. That book got thrown across (laughs) the room uh, and hit the wall. But then a couple days later, I picked it up. And you know it was right. In order to affect change in other people, you have to change yourself first and make yourself right. So for those that have a loved one that needs recovery but's not willing, don't wait. Get recovery yourself. So could someone who isn't the addict call there and have them help there? You could get help there if you. Oh, they can call me anytime. I would be happy to help them and and you know I celebrate recovery every Friday night. Okay. You know, except maybe this Friday night. We'll see. Yeah, oh, yeah. No, you know, this Friday night you're going out. We're not. We're going to let you have some fun. This is celebrate your recovery. That's absolutely wonderful. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, Judy, it's, I'm so glad you came. This has been so Thank long you. overdue. I love talking with you, and I admire you more than I could ever Thank say. You, you know, and I love you. Yeah, too. I know, and you're so great. And okay, so I'm going to the next something. I have to get there. It's my spirit. <laughs> it, it gets me nourishment. Thank you very much for being here with us, Judy. Really.